Hello and welcome to Full Craft for Blockheads with me, Critical Mole. This is episode 2, Exploration 101, the very basics. I was going to follow on with the Tinker's theme uh, with episode 2, but due to the upcoming 1.3, it might change up a lot of the information that I would have for you. So I've decided to wait until 1.3 is released before getting into making tools, etc. Now with the Exploration Basics, we've got a huge array of stuff to uh, cover some of it is going to be shown more demonstrably but a lot of it is going to involve recipes and i do apologize about that we will have as many hints and tips as possible and before we get into it i would just like to say thank you thank you to the fools for being supportive thank you for them to the fools for putting out huge amounts of decent videos and um to everybody watching thank you um my subscriber count has tripled, my view count has doubled, all just from episode one. Thank you so, so much. Now, what we are going to be doing is very, very simple. We're going to be going through the things you're going to want at the beginning of the game and beyond when exploring in order to get all the various lovely, jubbly stuff that's hidden throughout the world. We're going to start off with storage options. Now, in Fullcraft, your storage options are pretty much limited to bags of holding, portable storage, should I say, bags of holding, Hermatrons, and then you've got the RF Tools Storage Module Tablet, which in my mind is the greatest portable storage item in the history of modded Minecraft. I personally have not come across a portable storage device that I prefer to that. Now the Hermatrons, you're going to find them everywhere. You, you probably will find one within 10 minutes of loading up your world. That, that's how quickly you'll find them. And then you, you, in the next 10 minutes you'll find another three. That's just the way it works. Now you can craft the bag of holding. To do so you need to use a normal crafting bench. The advanced one from Tinkers which holds the items doesn't work. The reason for this is that it's going to take some levels from you in order to do it. Now to make the golden bag of holding, it's this recipe right here. We've got the gold, a couple of chests, and one of these new blocks, magical wood. That there will give you your bag of holding. Now to make the magical wood, it's simply a bookshelf and some gold in a regular crafting table. I've got it in the crafting station just to have it so it's there, but then you get the magical wood, goes into there, makes your bag of holding. Now the bag of holding, which I've gotten rid of, has your normal nine and then it's it's basically a double chest worth um, and then that's your option number one then you've got your hermatrons which you know, work pretty much exactly like shulker boxes do it vanilla i'm not going to say exactly simply because i'm not much of a vanilla player i haven't got a huge amount of experience with traditional shulker boxes next you've got the rf tools tablet for which you are going to end up needing power which is why it's not what you're going to want off straight off the bat but once you've gotten a bit of power um, and RF generation going this is where you're going to want to go so to start off with you're going to want to make your basic tablet now just a bit it's gold redstone quartz and an emerald so you, you get your storage uh, module now next you've got three tiers of storage modules these each tier represents 100 stacks that can go into the tablet and they progressively get slightly more expensive as you go and it just takes the previous tier to make the next tier. Once you've got all of your uh, tablet and your storage module you just go in here and com combine the two of them together and you'll end up with a tier 3 one which can hold 300 stacks and then you put it inside a capacitor a power cell something that allows you to charge items which has got some RF in it and charge it up at which point you have the ultimate storage in here you can hold 300 stacks you can even have a little bit of crafting going on you've got sorting options you've got groups you've got different ways of displaying the items you've got a button which will automatically compact equal stacks together and 
it's just absolutely fantastic. You can soul bind it using them at the enchantment so that you won't lose it on death. And all manner of good stuff like that. So now you can carry things. Now you've got to get from point A to point B as easily as possible. So we go into travel options. In here, uh, there's three really, really good routes for getting across the terrain. First off, you've got the slime boots and the slime sling, which are very, very early game. They allow you to bounce large distances and travel across the world very, very quickly. Next, you have the cloud pet, which gives you creative like flight. The downside to this is that you have to find it. The only ways that you can get this are from the pet bags uh, for, that can drop off mobs very very rarely. You can get them from inventory pets, uh, clouds, dungeons etc. It's a special chest and a special setup which we'll go into later this episode and they can be in there again fairly rare and you can also find them in roguelike dungeons again very rare. So if you get lucky you can get a cloud pet and it's actually really really strong then you have the angel ring the angel ring uses extra utilities grid power setup and it will allow you to use creative flight there's six different versions uh, the one without the little wings on it is invisible the rest of them give you little wings similar to what you can see in the background there on your player model so let's go into making them the slime sling is really 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 easy uh, for the boots all you need is congealed sli uh, green slime uh, green, well it doesn't have to be green it can be any of the colors C congealed slime blocks and slime balls so it's a grand total of 10 slime balls that you need to make that and then for this one it's another seven slime balls one for the block and then a couple of string to make the sling and with that you'll be able to bounce everywhere we'll have a quick demonstration when I uh, go out in the world after we're done with all of these boring boring recipes then you've got the hard one for making it you've got the, the angel ring to make the angel ring it takes one of these resonating redstone crystals which has a chance to drop whenever you harvest redstone then there's some gold some glass and now the important part you've got lasso uh, lassoes uh, you've got the golden one and you've got the cursed it takes a golden one to make a cursed and the differences are the regular golden one captures passive mobs, friendly mobs, and all that sort of thing. So you're talking your villagers, your cows, all of that lot can go into the golden lasso. Being extra utilities, it's another one of those recipes that you need to do in a regular crafting grid, and it takes a few levels to do. Now, you need to catch a bat and put it in there. Now, the cursed lasso is for taking on hostile monsters. You need to get the hostile monsters uh, below a certain level of health before you can capture them. If you try capturing them when they've got too much health, you'll get a little warning popping up telling you how many hearts or lower you need to get the monster to. Uh, to. For this, you need a ghast. So, as you can imagine, without flight, capturing a glass, uh, ghast by right clicking on it can be relatively difficult, which is what is the challenge with getting the angel ring. And that is a brief overview of the better travel options that we've got in the game. Next, we're going to want some armor. We've we covered furnace armor in the last episode and this time I'm going to be looking at these two the sugar cane and the obsidian again it's made exactly the same way uh, you just use sugar cane or obsidian in the appropriate patterns that you would make vanilla armors and you will get these now the benefits of this are is if you're wearing two pieces or more you'll get the set bonus for the sugar cane you get a big speed buff so you'll be zipping here, there, and everywhere. So really good for when you're exploring, trying to get from point A to point B quickly. The obsidian takes a little bit more to get because you need to get the obsidian. Uh, I pointed out in the Tinkers episode an easier way if you don't have a tool that can break obsidian yet by using the smeltery. Now the benefit that this has, if we open up and go to my inventory, which is gone, fantastic. We'll look at the obsidian chest. You've got immovable, flame resistant, and health boost. Immovable gives you 75% knockback resistance, flame resistant, fire equivalent of fire protection 4, and it also increases your max health by 10 hearts. It's also got pretty good armor values. So that's the kind of things that you want to wear if you're going to be going into a fight. Then we're going to go to talk about pet clouds. Pet clouds are at about Y level 150. If you change your settings so the normal vanilla clouds that you get in Minecraft 
aren't visible or if you have optifine you can raise them all the way up to build limit that way it'll make it easy for you to see these clouds and not be mixed in with the others up there there will be uh, semi-transparent blocks which forms a cloud and there will be a chest inside that chest will be a inventory pet and some food for, for inventory pets plus a couple of other bits now the cloud the clouds are the easiest ones to find the other ones you can get there are treetop ones dungeon ones which are found while you'll find while you're mining and then there's uh, sand ones which I believe are in rivers and things like that now there are going to be a couple of blocks in that setup which are actually spawners the cloud ones will spawn blazes the dungeon ones spawn zombies and the uh, sand slash river ones spawn poison spines I'm not sure about the treetop ones now to handle a pet cloud this is the, all the sort of things that you're going to need for the most part you're just going to need dirt and sand well, I say sand, a falling block. I choose dirt because it's a placeable block which is very quick to pick up and you can get very, very easily. Now, getting some lilies will help a lot because a lot of these clouds are gonna spawn above oceans and you don't really want to dive down and start pillaring up from the base of the ocean. If you can put a lily pad down, you can then carefully place a block on the side of the lily. It takes a little bit of practice, but we'll go into that in a bit. And then you can pillar up and take care of the cloud. I will demonstrate this at, towards the end of this episode. Next, we've got food. The only thing I'm going to go into here is the juicer. The juicer is simply a bit of smooth stone and a, a stone pressure plate, and that will give you a juicer. This will allow you to take many, many, many types of fruit from the vanilla ones to all the ones from Pam's Harvest Craft and make juice out of it. Now the benefit of it is, like this carrot, as you can see, you only get just under two shanks of food and a little bit of saturation. So if we take that carrot and we put it in to our crafting bench like that, you're going to get carrot juice. Moves it up to two, two and a half shanks and that's almost four times the saturation that you get from it. And you keep the juice up. I highly recommend in the early game this is your food me uh, method next everybody knows about chickens they're talked about left right and center they can provide you with lots and lots and lots of stuff and to start off with it you need to find some of them in the wild there's also fluid cows cows which when milked will give you a fluid which comes from any of the fluids that are present in the game whether that be molten gold whether it be milk water anything absolutely anything but you need to be able to transfer the animal from where you find them back to your base in order to use them now you, your options are you can use the golden lasso as mentioned before there or you can make yourself an animal net which is just some string and some sticks so as you're out in the world if you see cobwebs and string and all this sort of stuff and all uh, the structures that generate there's quite a few from recurrent complex which have got cobwebs Break them down, get the string, because you're going to find those animal nets very, very useful. And finally, on the recipe front, we have waystones. This, in my mind, it's a little bit further into the game, but it makes exploration very, very e a lot easier. This is a teleportation me uh, mechanism within the pack. You're going to need a waste, a waste warp stone, sorry, and waste stones you're going to want one of these in your base and then you're going to want to carry one with you when you're exploring to make the warp stone it's an emerald with four ender, ender pearls and four purple dye then to make the warp stones you're going to, uh, the waste stones you're going to need a warp stone three stone bricks and three obsidian now the way these work is you place them down in the world uh, you'll give it a name and it will be set you can then right click on it and the glyphs will activate. This now means that if you use a warp stone like this, you just hold it and you hold it like a bow charging up, it will then bring up a list, a list of all your uh, possible destinations. You click on the one you want and it will teleport you to that one. 
Now the reason why I say you want to carry one of these ones you go exploring, let's say that you go off and you're 5,000 blocks from home. You're obviously going to use your waystone to get home, but there might be stuff that you're out exploring that you want to go back to and you're not going to want to travel that 5,000 blocks. So if you have a waystone which is dedicated towards exploration, just pop it down, call it explore exploration and it will last there until you pick it up and when you pick it up it will go back into your inventory and you can place it down somewhere else now you it will still show up in your list but if you click on it it'll say that the waystone is no longer available and then remove it from the list it's a way of making sure you know that it's gone that is the recipe portion now to get into a little bit more on the hands-on fun stuff that you can see outside in the world and I'm gonna have to make a quick change so I'm in the proper gear and I have all these necessities for going out into the world and that should be right after this cut here we are all suited and booted and ready for our adventuring needs as you can see I filled my uh, inventory with all the things that I was discussing for the task ahead we have our portable storage, yes I know it's a bit further on than the rest of the stuff but I just like it. And we're currently wearing two pieces of the sugar cane for the speedy, we've got an obsidian piece there and we've got a couple of the other bits of the obsidian ready to go in case we get into trouble. We've also got the slime boots for travel, I've put a pick there just to for showing off things in a bit but you'll probably be using an iron pick along with the iron shovel. Now. I was telling you that this has a fair, fairly decent speed, uh, speed buff from the speedy. Let's have a look at it, shall we? As you can see, this is significant. This is not sprinting, by the way. This is just normal running. And if I sprint, we go even faster. As you can see, very useful way of getting around. Now, I haven't actually gone that far. I think I'm about, you know, a couple of minutes run from uh, where I was setting up the tutorials and we have a herbatron it's as simple as that sorted and you'll find many of them around now the other thing that i wanted to show off was the slime boots what we're going to be doing is heading over to that cloud over there the only one in the sky that's because my clouds are switched off which means if you see a, if i see a cloud i know that it's an inventory pair as you can see it's all over there so we get the sling figure out which direction we're going face the opposite direction hit the floor draw it back like a bow and we get a load of frame rate lag which is perfectly helpful but as you can see one sling got us past the mark with a little bit of practice you'll be slinging to exactly where you want to be in no time whatsoever now what you want to do with these clouds is line yourself up directly below them now at this point I would use uh, dirt to pillar up and we'll just go like that now in the, in the sake of brevity I will rejoin you at the top once you've managed to pillar your way up to about Y144 you will have the cloud within your reach now there are multiple ways you can attack the cloud you can either go up deal with all the blazes that are going to spawn it, it's a mess because you know they hit you you fall you die well you won't die because you've got your slime boots uh the, the other options available to you are vein mine it with your hand it's going to take a long time but you'll get there and that will break or you can replace the bit with just right clicking on it will change it to dirt which means you can go block by block, changing it out, and then breaking it. Probably take you just as long as vein mining a lot of it. I personally recommend vein mining everything. Just for the sake of ease, we're going to use my Uber pick just to make it done quickly. Now, you'll see we're left with two blocks. That's because these are spawners. These are where the ghasts come from, and this is why I have the sand. Because another option you've got is if you replace it with a gravity block the sand will replace it and then fall and then when you get back down you just pick it all back up so then we just need to go up a little bit more we can get inside the pet and oh look at that we've got a double chest pet another option 
for your portable storage. The downside is that he does consume wood, which you need to keep in your inventory. And then we've got some nuggets and some lapis, which are food, and a couple of other bits and pieces. Personally, I just like to clean up after myself, so I always break that, and that gives us the opportunity to start digging down because nerd pillars are unsightly and they should never be left. Yeah, your game, do it your way. So that is how you attack a cloud pet, well, an inventory pet cloud. Like I said, there's other ones you're gonna find in other locations, in dungeons, by rivers, all over the place. And, but this is the one which is a little bit more unique, easier to find, and that has a couple of tips attached to how you can approach it. The rest of them you're going to uh, approach very much like you would a spawner dungeon, a stronghold, things that you're going to be used to from vanilla. That's right. What happens if your cloud is above an ocean? Let's just assume this is an ocean. We can't just pillar up from here because, you know, reasons. For this, you're going to want your lily pads. What I do is I place, I place, not full. Oh, I'm just brilliant, aren't I? Place one, two blocks away, get your dirt, and if you go up, as soon as it says lily pad, press that, you've got your block, and you can start your pillar up. And you can just, afterwards, break your lily pads, and you're good. Now, there are a lot of different uh, lily pads in Fallcraft because of the way the pack's been made, you'll find a lot of them in riverside areas. Usually on the offshot of um, forested areas, you know, woodlands, boreal forests, etc, etc. And those areas will have, plus your swamps, they'll have lots of lily pads for you to pick up your supply. As long as it's something you can stand on and you can place on water, you're good. Now there's one last thing that we need to go into when it comes to exploration and that's the topic of roguelike dungeons to give you an idea of what they look like and a couple of tips when dealing with them. So I'm going to go off, find one and show you the amazingness that is roguelike dungeons. And here we are ladies and gentlemen, got lucky, found a nice little sword in a chest and we have found what we are looking for. That there looks like an innocuous little building, but when it's out in the middle of nowhere like this, it means just one thing, a roguelike dungeon. Now, a lot of the ones you're gonna find, they're gonna look like round towers with torches all around the top. But you also get these buildings quite regularly. Now, you've got your little building, which could make a nice little star base. Stuff comes with furnace, crafting got some cake, now, upstairs in these ones, you always got your first chest, which has your roguelike dungeon-like loot. And some of this stuff is really quite good if you're right at the start of your game. Now, for a roguelike dungeon, you're gonna want your torches, you're gonna want a weapon. Now, we're gonna wanna switch out to our obsidian armor because we don't wanna be squishy. Everything else has gone into my backpack now going down here you'll see a nice long spiral staircase which will take us in to the roguelike now what I always do take the middle block above the door on each side and do the equivalent there that will light up the entirety of the floor and you won't have any mob spawn in this little bit here now it's going to go off into the dungeon you've got the spawners and all that sort of jazz. Look, level two already. And we got those bits there. Now, the only tip that I'm gonna give you with these roguelikes, I'll probably do an episode which goes into these in great detail, but to begin with, let's just quickly get our dirt back. So we've got a few blocks. Because it could be handy. We're gonna get rid of those. Uh, we're gonna light up as we go. Oh, look at that. We don't have to worry. The only little tip that I'm going to be giving you right now, close that off just in case, is when you find one of these, get your journey map, get your waypoints, 
I always abbreviate it to RLB, and then what you do is you go level two, because that tells you that it's on level two. Now, that's the stairway down. What I do is, when you can fly, it's a lot easier. But see about pillaring up, and so you can get to the surface. Yep, where you'll have a hole with your waypoint shining out of it, and with your slime boots, you better jump down that hole straight to where you want to be, and you won't take damage because of the slime boots. That way, you can go do this each time you come across a staircase going down to the next level, and that way you don't have to run around trying to remember how to get from point A to point B in order to progress further in the dungeon. We will, however, go, oh no, I've got people coming, so I need to come back and do this later. But, how are we going to travel those thousands and thousands of blocks? That's right, our friendly little waystone. Put our waystone there. RLD. Done. Right click on it to activate it. Then we can go like this. We can go back to our example one, which is back in our tutorial area. Let me know down in the comments what you would like to know about Fullcraft. If you've got any questions, any mods that you want me to delve into. Tips and tricks that you would like to share. If you've got tips and tricks that you would like me to share with the rest of the Fullcraft universe, let me know. Of course, there's the usual obligatory like baiting of click the like, click subscribe. Last episode at the time of recording had just over 500 views. And... I would love to match that, and I would love to get more likes than last time. It would be absolutely fantastic, but, you know, no pressure. This has been me, Critical Mole, developer of, well, co-developer of uh, Fullcraft, and I will see you next time. Will it be Tinkers? Will it be something else? It all depends on whether 1.3 is here. That's me, out.